Joining me on set is Jonathan Greenblatt, the CEO and the National Director of the ADL. Jonathan, it's always so good to see you. I, I hate that we get together, yeah. um, especially under circumstances like this. Before we started this, yeah. this segment, we were having a really blunt conversation about what your concerns are about this ground offensive and what type of kind of ripple effect you think it's going to have. Talk about it. Well, we know uh, that incidents in the Middle East where Israel's involved in fighting Hezbollah or Hamas or any of these terror groups tend to prompt anti-Semitism in the United States and around the world. Mm -hmm. Synagogues, kosher restaurants, Jewish community centers, schools, just ordinary people tend to become targets and they're victimized when people see the images or hear the stories and see Jews, if you will, as a soft target. Mm -hmm. So already we've seen in the past week in the past week, we have seen some really awful things in the United States, as you reported. We've seen dozens of incidents where, again, individuals, synagogues, homes have been vandalized, people have been harassed. We've seen around the world, in France, in the first 48 hours after the attack, there were a thousand reported anti-Semitic incidents. In the UK, we saw a 400 percent increase in the four days after the attack. And yesterday in Germany, there were apartment buildings in Berlin with a large concentration of Jewish residents that had stars of David spray painted outside the buildings. In Germany? Yeah, I've got reports coming in this morning of four different buildings, again, where there's a large concentration of Jewish residents, and they're sort of being tagged and identified. Now, look, we know, we know that Hezbollah has reportedly had sleeper agents. There have been Hezbollah's people arrested in the UK, in this country. We know Iranian nationals have been arrested for surveilling Jewish sites, again, like offices and synagogues in Los Angeles, in Chicago, in New York in recent years. And we know, you know, the Iranian, Iran is the largest state sponsor of terror. They use terror to advance their agenda. If you look at the bus attack on Israeli tourists in Bulgaria a few years ago, if you look at Argentina, where they blew up a Jewish community center and a Jewish school, like this is what they do. And so just this past Friday, the head of Hamas, who, by the way, isn't in Gaza City, but resides comfortably in a villa in Qatar, he called for a global day of jihad. Mm -hmm. I got dozens and dozens of calls on Wednesday and Thursday from Jewish people who said, should I send my child to school? Yep. Should I stay home all day? Now, I want to think about this for a minute. He called for a global day of jihad. That's what he said in Arabic. It was translated in English as day of rage. So right there, you're sort of diminishing it because he's trying to religify, if you will, the conflict, make it about Islam versus Judaism, say all Jews are targets. But wouldn't you think that a call like this would draw worldwide condemnation? Wouldn't you think that leaders, not Jewish leaders, governors and mayors and just people in positions of authority would say this is wrong. You can't stage a global day of jihad against Jewish people everywhere. Katie, it got almost no coverage. It got almost no attention. Can you imagine a world in which someone would say a global war on Catholics, a global war on Protestants, a global war on Muslims, attack Muslims wherever they should be? So it's very worrisome to me that terror and anti-Semitism is being used to prosecute this conflict right here at home. So is there a distinction with a difference then, Jonathan, between being anti-Israel and being anti-Jewish? Hmm. Well, look, I think you can certainly be a critic of Israel. You can say, I don't like these policies. Or are they being conflated, I guess, is really yeah, the I question. Yeah, I think you can criticize Israel. I've criticized policy of the Israeli government. I'm not anti-Israel. But I think where we draw the line is being anti-Zionist. Okay. What I mean by that is this ideology that says, I oppose the existence of the Jewish state. I oppose the legitimacy of Jews having the right to self-determination. I oppose the whole notion that Jewish people should be able to live in their ancestral homeland. That is an ideology which is now common on college campuses. It's common in some corridors of power. We have people in Congress, like Rashida Tlaib, who professes this idea. And then, by the way, it's common in some newsrooms. We see this with the copy editors and some other people making decisions. But anti-Zionism, I've long said, is anti-Semitism. I was wrong. Anti-Zionism is genocide. And what I mean is, if you so dehumanize Zionists, by the way, every Jewish person is a Zionist. 
You might not believe in the political project of the state of Israel, but every Saturday morning, like for me yesterday, you open your prayer book and it talks about Zion. It talks about Jerusalem. Jews have been praying to Jerusalem for 2,000 years, 2,000 years. But here's the point. Zionism is whether you're a religious Jew going to synagogue every day or you're just a cultural Jew who even thinks of themselves as an atheist. Zionism is embedded in our tradition. It's fundamental to our existence. And so for the anti-Zionist who says all Zionists are evil, all Zionists are bad, the Zionist project is wrong, that leaves us in a very weird position. But Jonathan, dehumanizing in, all of us. But in some way, though, by painting such a broad stroke, though, do you in some way kind of do the same thing by saying so. that that's the case? Look, there are plenty of, again, people, organizations, governments, like the U.S. government agrees, disagrees sometimes with the policies of the state of Israel. But it's not fundamentally committed to destroying the state. But I think Iran goes, drives that. But Jonathan, I also think it goes almost beyond that to the point where it's the denigration and the dehumanization yes. of a people. It's not just limited to the Jews. It's not just limited to yes. Israelis. It, people could say the same for other tribes of people across the world. So how, how concerned are you about this ground offensive being launched lawfully yeah. Yeah. by the Israeli Defense yeah. Forces? Yeah. How concerned are you about anti-Semitic incidents now going to skyrocket Look, once people see what happens more so in Gaza? I'm deeply concerned. Like, it would be wrong for me or anyone to hold all Palestinian people responsible Which for we Hamas. do not. Which we of do not say. Of course we don't do that. That would be wrong. Hamas are terrorists, period. Exactly. And by the same token, it's wrong to hold Jewish people collectively responsible for the government of Israel does. Now, all Palestinians may support, you know, their brethren in Gaza, like all Jewish people may support their brothers and sisters in the state of Israel, but it is wrong to hold any people collectively responsible. I must tell you, you know, on Thursday and on Friday, there were massive rallies on college campuses and then in cities around the world in support of Hamas, these pro-Hamas rallies. In London, there were reportedly 50,000 people marching in the streets. Here in New York, we had thousands of people marching on Friday afternoon. So for Jewish people, we feel very alarmed and concerned that these people are marching in support of a group that decapitated babies, that, you know, executed the elderly, that shot, you know, children in front of their parents, shot parents in front of their children. I mean, I saw one terrible video, terrible video of a Thai worker being beaten and battered and then decapitated with a shovel. I mean, these people are barbarians. So it's hard for us to reconcile. How in the world can people be marching in support of this? How can people say decolonization? Like, I'm sorry, if decolonization involves decapitation, I don't know who thinks that's a good idea. And I think, and unfortunately, we've run out of time. But Jonathan, I do think that's why education is important. I think 100%. people need to educate themselves on all sides of these issues yep. about not only the history, but being pro-Hamas is not pro-Palestinian. Being pro-Hamas is anti-Palestinian. Being pro-Hamas is anti-Gaza. Being pro... The, the events of last weekend, Katie, have unfortunately pushed the Palestinian people farther away from their own independence than they've yeah. ever been. Jonathan Greenblatt, as always, thank you for being here. Thanks I for having me. I appreciate it.